this is going to be an epic gaming PC build, and I'm really excited about it because I'll admit, sometimes when I'm parting out builds for you guys to put together at home and I'm trying to stick to a budget, trying to stick to that budget can be a little bit constricting, and sometimes I just want to go all out. So, I'm building today in the Height Y60 case, a case that was one of my favorites from the past year, so I'm using the red version because this is an all red build, because I'm using the 7950X CPU from AMD, as well as a whole set of Lexus Lexar components and Lexar has sponsored this build, so a huge thank you to them. We have not only a 64 gigabyte setup of their Ares DDR5 memory, but we have M.2 NVMe SSDs, the NM800 Pro, which is available with and without a heatsink, and we've got four more terabytes of SSD storage with these NS100 two terabyte SATA SSDs. The remaining components were meticulously hand selected by me, including Lian Lee's Uni fans, including a motherboard and all in one liquid cooler from Asus. And thanks to Lexar's generous support, I will be able to give this system away to one of you guys to help support the charity live stream that Kyle and I will be doing on December 10th for Extra Life to support Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Now, these are all objectively good things and a good reason for me to be excited about the build and hopefully for you guys to be excited as well and to mark your calendars for December 10th. But you might notice that that there is one part missing that might even be the best part of this build, and the stupid thing is I can't even tell you about it yet. I don't have a graphics card arrayed in front of me here. I'm gonna be building with this one today, which is the Reference Design 6900 XT from AMD, but there will be a different graphics card that will be installed in this system in the future in a follow-up video, and uh, I can't, again, tell you what that graphics card is gonna be, but I will say that uh, the devil's in the details. Excellent. So here's the cool part at the beginning where uh, we go over the parts and we have them all arrayed on the table here for our glorious build. And again, I chose the Height Y60 case because when I first did a build in this case, which I did, uh, I don't know how many months ago, but I'll link that in the description. I did it in the white version of this case and I saw the red one and I was like, you know what? For a specific type of build, specifically one that heavily features AMD, the red version of this case is, is just striking and it has uh, really cool red accents, uh, red and black overall color scheme. Comes with a graphics card riser, so the graphics card is gonna be positioned here in a very visible area of the build. So I think that's gonna look great. And I'm gonna be using these fans with the build too. They're from Lian Lee, the UniFan SLINF120. So these are the Infinity version, the slightly newer versions of the uh, Uni fans that they've come out with. They sort of snap together, which is very convenient for the build process. And this is gonna give us a nice uniform look uh, with all the fans installed in the case. So I've got three that are gonna go on the top radiator and I might be sacrificing a little bit of performance with that radiator going with these versus the uh, Noctua ones that ship with the Ryujin 2 360. But I got six of these total, so we should be able to put three across the top, one on the back, and then two on the side intake. For our CPU, we have none other than the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. Look at that, I, I didn't see any other option here. Yes, there's other 7000 series CPUs. There might even be 3D Vcache versions of these GPUs coming out pretty soon, but for now we're sticking with this and it is no slouch at all. It is one of the best gaming CPUs that are out there, as well as one of the best productivity mainstream CPUs as well. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, I picked this up via the Black Friday sales where it was uh, marked down pretty significantly. And I'd like to say another huge thank you to Lexar for sponsoring this build and providing this awesome set of hardware as well. I've shown them off a few times and they, they have some pretty nice designs. This is the Ares kit, uh, which is one of their DDR5 setups. So we've got two of these for 64 gigabytes total. It's DDR5 5200 speed and a very clean looking design with some gray and some black on the heat sinks there. We also have these uh, SSDs. This is, this is basically the same SSD, just in two different trims, the NM800 Pro. They have it available with no heat sink, so if your motherboard happens to have a heat sink uh, like this Asus one has right up there, then go with the no heat sink model. Or if your motherboard has an M.2 slot without a heat sink that you're planning to install it to, then get the version that does have the heat sink. They both look very clean, very nice, and uh, really, really good performance too, with up to 7,500 megabytes per second reads on these drives. And again, these are each two terabytes. Of course, especially with the Steam Autumn sale having just gone on, you might need even more storage uh, for your games and whatnot. So we are also adding a couple Lexar NS100 two terabyte SATA SSDs just to complete the build, just to finish things out, just to give uh, the eventual winner of this system a really, really crazy amount of storage to work with. And again, a big thank you to Lexar for sponsoring this system. Rounding things out, we have a really nice motherboard, the Asus ROG Strix X670E-F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard with RGB accents, with all of the uh, Asus ROG goodness that you get with their higher-end motherboards. This is, this is not an inexpensive board by any stretch. 
which is good that I'm using it in a sponsored giveaway build because I don't have to care quite as much about the uh, price of this motherboard. And I could focus a little bit more on some of the really nice features like the excellent power delivery, overall clean aesthetic design, and the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel port, which is always good to have. The Height Y60 supports a 360 millimeter AIO at the top. So we're going with the Asus ROG Ryujin 2 360, a very solid high performance all in one liquid cooler. And it also has a full color LED screen on the CPU pump block mount. And that is an aesthetic upgrade. It's not something that everyone's gonna want on their cooler, but again, since uh, you're not gonna have to pay for it, since this is a giveaway system, I'm okay to include it. As I mentioned in the intro, we're missing actually not one part, but two parts from this build so far. So for the graphics card, we're using a stand-in, the RX 6900 XT, which is absolutely no slouch in terms of a graphics card. But I will be doing a second part of this video that will be posted the week of December 12th, where I will be able to reveal the actual graphics card that will be installed. And it would be nice to maybe show a little uh, comparison of how this 6900 XT, formerly the top end GPU on the Radeon stack, performs compared to the graphics card that we eventually install. I also don't have a power supply, and I actually did order a power supply, and it's actually an Asus ROG 850 watt, 80 plus gold PSU, which is black and red, and actually blends in really nice with this build on top of being an 850 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. However, that was back ordered. It's shipping out like today or tomorrow as of the filming of this. So for today, I'm gonna be using a stand in the Corsair HX1000i. And the final component for this build, uh, I'm actually not sure about yet. So this is something that I'm hoping you guys can help me out with. Cable extensions are often an excellent finishing touch for a build. I got all these from Amazon. They're not all super expensive. In fact, they're all fairly inexpensive, but I have three cable extension kits from Formula Mod, from Asia Horse, and from Kitcom. So I'll be showing those all to you and allowing you to give some feedback on which of these kits you think looks best. We've got two that are gray and then one that is red. And that pretty much brings us up to speed. So I am now going to assemble this build and I'll stop from time to time to give you guys some notes on the build process. Let's get started. And there is our case, the Height Y60 in the red trim, which is it's so red. And I know that red is not for everyone. Red is a color that stands out a lot. It's very like, look at me and everything, but this is a look at me kind of build. Oh, look, there I am in the reflection, hi. But, but the reason I picked this case for this build uh, is first because I had seen the red version and thought it looked pretty cool and I wanted to do a build in it. But waiting until like we had the Ryzen 7000 series available I think was the right call. I really like the aesthetics of this build, the sort of lines that go on the back and across the top and they continue down there on the bottom of the case. It of course has the three tempered glass side panels as well as the riser cable for the vertical GPU mount here on the side. So if you have a nice graphics card, it's gonna give you a very clean look at it. If there is a criticism or complaint about this case, uh, it's that the airflow is not fantastic. It's not bad by any stretch. It's just not as good as some of the most high airflow cases that are on the market, but it's gonna be totally fine for the hardware that we're putting in it today. And I like the fact that uh, for instance, the riser cable that they have right here has the same accent color as the exterior of the case. So if you get the white version of the case, that's white, black version of the case, that's black. And although it is a full size ATX case to keep the overall footprint down with the vertical mount here, you have half height expansion slots, but you can still use half height expansion cards. Uh, like in the build that I did in the white version of this case, I put a 4K capture card from Corsair in there. We also have some nice quality of life features here at the back, like a couple externally accessible 3.5 inch drive bays. Uh, the the power supply is rotated 90 degrees to be vertical there again to save a little bit more on space. And it's not a super difficult case to build in either since most of the panels just sort of pop off kind of like that one. It's got an area here in the top for a 360 millimeter AIO. You can also do a 240 or 280 here in the side. And again, in the white version of this case, uh, the build that I did there was fully liquid cooled with the CPU cooled by an AIO on the top and a water cooled graphics card as well. I'll post the link to that build in the description if you guys are interested and hadn't watched it. And with the removal of a thumb screw right there, the uh, side panel lifts off kind of like that to give us a better look at the internals. And again, just, just sort of clean lines in the continuation of the aesthetic going throughout the case is, is I, I think I've given enough reasons for why I chose this case. It does ship with this piece of foam in here. Let me get this out so you can see everything a little bit better. 
That's just to keep the riser cable positioned where it should be, even though it's not connected to a motherboard on the other side. As you can see, there are grommeted pass-throughs here for all of your cables. Uh, you can even go on this side as well, depending on what you have installed uh, here. And it comes with three fans pre-installed, one here for exhaust at the back, two down here for intakes at the bottom. So those I'm gonna leave as is because uh, those Lian Lee fans would be kind of wasted down there at the bottom, not being able to see their RGB bling, but I will have uh, one here at the back, three across the top, and then two here on the side. Okay, there's your once over of the Height Y60 case. Let's get the system put together. Our motherboard setup is complete. We got the uh, standoffs here for the all-in-one liquid cooler. We have all four of our Lexar Ares dims installed, and isn't it nice when you can populate all four slots? I sure hope that these work out of the gate with their 5200 memory speed. I think they will. And then, of course, there were the SSDs. Unfortunately, we have uh, heat sink covers. So fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, there are uh, actually heat sinks on all the M.2 slots on this board. This upper one here is meant for a high-speed PCIe 5.0 slot, so I have not populated that one. This one's actually PCIe 5.0 as well, and the bottom two here are PCIe 4.0. That means they still have uh, the full bandwidth to support our Lexar NM800 Pro uh, and that two NVMe SSDs, although I did have to remove the heatsink from the one that shipped with the heatsink. So just to show you guys that both of them are available, and now both of them are installed in these bottom two slots with two PCIe 5.0 expansion slots available potentially for the future. We've reached a key inflection point with this build. We're working on installing the AIO and uh, the Lian Lee fans. Really, really convenient how those just snap together. And there should be enough room down on this end for the little terminal connector and uh, the wires that come off of that to feed them back up there to keep this part of the case really clean looking. But before I drop that in up on top, I wanna make sure that anything I need to plug in along the top edge of the motherboard is already plugged in. So we now have an important decision to make. As I already mentioned, I have three sleeved cable kits. One of them is red. These are from Asia Horse, which is a, a popular and inexpensive sleeved cable extension brand uh, on Amazon. We also have these gray ones here. These are from Formula Mod. Uh, also pretty, pretty much the same sort of look and quality, I would say, in terms of the finish on the cables themselves, but this is gray, so it'll stand out a little bit, but not nearly as blingy as the red. Then these here, which are made by Kitcom, uh, the ones on top from your perspective, and between the two grays, I'm leaning towards the Kitcom ones. They just seem a little bit shinier, a little bit a little bit blingier, I guess. I don't know, it's standing out a little bit more uh, than the sort of muted look from uh, this one from Formula Mod. Of course, the red is going to be the most standout, but do we want it to stand out that much? Or do we want the red on the case and the other components to stand out? I am not sure. So guys, I am asking for your feedback in the comments section down below. I think for now to get stuff plugged in so we can fire up the system, I'm gonna go with these gray ones up on top. But let me know for the finished build if you think the red's the best looking, if you think the gray's the best looking. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I'll probably just throw both kits in for whoever wins this, um, but for at least the finished build for today and the final video and stuff, uh, let me know what you think. You know, it's one of the nicest features about this case. It's this block of front panel connectors instead of individual leads. 
Watch, watch. I just connected front panels. That's all it took. Hooray. Please, all case manufacturers, do this. So we've kind of reached the RGB hell phase of this build, which is where we would totally be done if it wasn't for all the RGB lights and connectors and stuff that we had to connect up. But part of the reason I chose these Lee M. Lee Uni fans, and these are the Uni Inf, Inf which is infinity, which is because they have infinity mirrors uh, in the center of the blades and, and on either side, is because you can actually snap them together and then you just have one connector that goes on the end to plug in. And they actually include two adapters. Uh, for one of the adapters, the other end of the connector goes to a standard fan plug, a four pin PWM connector, and an ARGB connector like that, so you can plug it into your motherboard if you're just running a single fan. But if you start to get up to three, four, five, six fans or more, you probably need to use uh, what comes with the three fan kit, which is this little uni fan adapter. So this needs to plug in a couple SATA power cables. It needs to plug into a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, uh, but it provides you with four connectors, uh, two on either side. And then each fan also ships with an additional connector that has this proprietary plug. And while I don't like proprietary plugs in general, this does mean we can plug in both the RGB and the actual fan power with one header. And then if we use the other side of this, to a connector that has two fans or three fans, and we only need to plug that in once. However, depending on where you have the fans installed in your case, you might want the wiring to go one way or another. And I've just noticed a couple features of these fans that is actually pretty cool, pretty thoughtful by Lee M. Lee. So that's how the connector snaps on and slides over like that. But the top of this, you can actually slide over as well, and you can kind of lift this top piece off, and then you can take the wire, and you, you can go straight, you can remove that completely and go straight out if that happened to work for you a little bit better, or you can simply fold it over the other way, and then pop this back on, and that'll help you route your cables just a little bit better. And you pop this piece back on that side. That'll help keep your cable management just a little bit cleaner by being able to route that whichever way you want it to go. But there's even one more little added uh, extra for these fans that I didn't know about that I just recently discovered. The end that you don't have uh, something connected to, you'll have these two little plugs sticking out, which isn't the biggest deal, but it doesn't look the best. You can just spin those and pop them out too. Cool. So there comes a time in every build where I, where I despair and give up hope. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, where I decide, I, I have to decide like, uh, am I cutting corners here? Am I doing this like the right way? And for this build, since there is absolutely a part two and we're not necessarily using all of the parts that we're intending to use, there will definitely be a part two. And so I have cut just a few corners, just, just a few. They're mostly in the back. It's an area that is, is, fills me with great shame and I'm not really gonna show you much. I probably will, but I'm still very ashamed about it. But for now, look what's going on up here in the front. Look at this. Look at this graphics card being installed. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? You know, there was a lot of uh, controversy about this red accent line here on the Radeon 6000 series when these reference designs came out because, you know, some people like it. Some people like, I don't have any red in my system, so I don't want that. For this system, Oh my gosh, does it match up perfectly? This is like almost, almost the ideal graphics card to install in this system, but I think maybe, just maybe, there's a different one that might work even better. But, but I have no idea what I'm talking about, of course. I don't know 
I don't know what's going to happen with this bill. You like it. Speak of the devil. Who knows what the future will bring? <laughs> speak, of the, <laughs> speak of the devil. <laughs> At this point, we are essentially finished with phase one of this build. Of course, phase two, which is going to be covered again in a follow-up video posted the week of December 12th. I will be swapping out the power supply, installing a different graphics card, doing a little bit of performance testing, maybe even a little bit of before and after testing, I think would be nice. But for now, I have plugged in the system, I switched on the power, uh, we're immediately getting a picture on our Asus ROG Ryujin 2 AIO, which is nice. Good, good to know that that works right out of the gate. And why don't we go ahead and uh, power this thing on, see if it works. <gasps> it kind of does. So upon booting the system up for the first time, it looked like this. Uh, the RGB was a little bit of a mess and we were having an issue with the fans spinning up. Fortunately, I was able to spend a little bit more time with it, got those fans spinning, got the operating system installed so I can install the Lian Li software to control their RGB fans, and now everything looks much nicer. I even took the time to peel off the uh, plastic from the tempered glass, which is a hallowed tradition of the PC building videos. But as I've hopefully mentioned quite a few times up to this point, there's a reason this build is not 100% complete. And that's because one of the main components, the graphics card, I can't quite share with you yet. But again, there will be a follow-up video covering that, covering the final iteration of this build, as well as a bit of a testing to show you the performance. Before I close this one out though, one final reminder that there's a reason why I started this build a little bit early and not quite complete. And that's because we are promoting our charity live stream where we're gonna be raising money for Children's Miracle Network hospitals through Extra Life. I'll be live streaming with my good friend Kyle, aka Bitwit, and that will be happening on Saturday, December 10th. So stay tuned for that, and stay tuned for the follow-up of this video too. A huge, huge thank you to Lexar for sponsoring this video and this giveaway. And of course, if you'd like to check out the parts from Lexar that I used or any of the components for this build, they're all linked in the video's description down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That's always much appreciated. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can get notified when my new videos go live. One last plug for my store, paulshardware.net, where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and more. And there is a holiday sale going on now through the end of December. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.